Oi! This here's Boncho Truth. Welcome them you all to Aneta Otaku Evolution, you follow me? This here is my game, the Saitama Slayers. We're tough as nails delinquents to the core, man, and we'll bash your head in just as soon as look at you. You see us give you the eye, you make tracks, cousin, I tells you. Now I'm filling in for that beta dog, Penguin Truth, who had an unfortunate accident with a couple of flights of concrete stairs and is, shall we say, indisposed at the moment. But no matter, that little pussy couldn't possibly handle today's subject, Sukiban Decker. Now, first of all, you gotta understand that in post-World War Japan, delinquency and rebellion took on its own subcultures. Two of these that emerged in the 1960s were the Bancho and Sukiban. Basically, male and female juvenile delinquency with their own styles. These badass tribes of bastards and bitches had a certain look to them. The guys with the pompadours, with the straw in the mouths, bandanas, a surgeon mask, sometimes a military cap. The ladies would actually wear longer skirts, avoid men for the most part, and wear their uniforms everywhere. Sukuban were a hot topic for exploitation films, pink violence they called them. And even though the craze died down in the 1970s, its impact could still be found in some modern manga and anime. It was basically the youth version of Bozuzuku vehicle culture, and you can see references in a lot of things. That brings us to the topic of this thing, Sukuban Deka, or Girl Delinquent Detective. It's based on a manga that ran from the mid-70s to the 80s by the late, great Shinji Wada. It was actually one of them girly mangas, but shit! It had prison fights, school brawls, all the good family entertainment we take for granted today. Stories about this ballsy gash name of Saki Asamiya, who was at teen prison and then deputized by the authorities to pull one of them 21 Jump Street things and snitch the fuck out of high schools. And dig this shit, they gave her a fucking yo-yo as a weapon. Now normally I'd have one of my girls give this snitch a fat lip, but she can walk the dog like a motherfucker. Apparently there's this family of barely concealed sociopaths with three daughters that attend and control the shit out of high school. Saki's tasked with getting some dirt on these nasty broads, but only one of them is obviously evil, this black-haired bent with four elite henchmen, and... Wait a minute. Don't lose your way! In your mind, we have to be as one! The two sisters are this fancy shit painter bimb, and this drill-haired queen bee who everybody everywhere loves. Except she's secretly the sickest diva of all, with no love for anyone. Seriously, bitch probably has teeth in a hole. It's gonna be tricky dicky to overcome this bevy of buxom baronesses. They make their own rules. And I can respect that. All Saki's got is her wits, a couple of contacts, and a yo-yo. But hey, don't knock the yo-yo. That's your trick? Oh, here's my trick! <laughs> oh, and get a load of this crazy shit, man! There were live-action versions of this thing way back in the olden times. TV shows starring idol singers in the main roles. Cutesy sluts kicking teeth in before that Jewish broad that fought Dracula's carved her first steak. Crazy shit, man! They even made movies and... Oh shit, is that fucking Vigo from Ghostbusters 2? The fuck? Look at this chump! There you go, you Carpathian strunks! Get the fuck out of here! Go back to your mountain of skulls in the castle of pain and sit on your throne of blood, you bona fide douchebag! Ain't got time for your painting and inhabiting bullshit when there's school kids to rough up! That aside, Saki's also got a couple of buddies to support her mission to smack the taste out of the rich bitch's dick slurpers. This mousy dame she saved from shitbags, who is an accomplished artist, and this pussy repellent limp dick who shaves his head as a sign of... Uh, shit, I don't know, man. Admiration for Krillin? 
Saki endangers her reputation as a badass by hanging with these mooks, but makes up for it by beating people down. Well, except this one time. We're being watched. Someone set this up just to see what I can do. Every trick, every move. Which one is it? I can feel her eyes on me right now. Who's out there watching? <laughs> Certainly an anti-climax. She must have lost her touch in the reformatory. <laughs> Oofa! Well, you know, everybody takes the lick, sure as shit. You spill, you bleed. If you play the game, you're gonna get lumps. Shit, you ought to see the initiation you get for the tribes, man. When I was starting out, you had to tell a Yakuza that his waifu was shit. I still had the burn marks from the cigarettes on my Stugats, but it was worth it. One of the schemes the crime family perpetrated was sabotaging a bus carrying students on a field trip, killing two birds with one stone. This allowed space for parents wanting the little brats and willing to fork over money to, you know, free up some space to park the spoiled progeny in that most prestigious of institutions that allows gang fights in the schoolyard. Fucking disgracia! I would've just cracked some teeth until some students suddenly want to transfer. What a waste of good buses you could be using to transport contraband. This conniving clan of calamities cunts ought to be curb stomped to an oozy paste, I say. But that ain't all the shit they're up to. The raven haired Banshee's been running some kind of shakedown operation. Even though her pockets are fatter than my Aunt Carlotta after Columbus Day meal. This greedy wench loves them papers. I tell ya, lives for the papers. Then there's Squidhead here who gets jealous when she sees the mousy chick's new work. Bitch has the picture stolen. But that ain't the least that happens, cause Mousy gets taken by hired goons. Who is it? Goons. Who? Hired goons. Hired goons? <laughs> ah, Capreca! The timid little doll's broken. Snitchy Yo-Yo vows vendetta on the skinky snake sisters. Man, that's just what happened when my cousin Lorenzo rest his soul after the Yakuza carved him up in Roppongi, the fucking animals. To this day, I can't step toe into Tokyo because of the bloodbath that followed. Shit, I was breaking skulls as far as Adachi. This was before the Slayers, mind you. Had to start from the bottom work my way up again. How'd you think one-eyed Takiru over there got his name, eh? No hard feelings there, buddy. We peasants now. Meanwhile, Drill here has a bunch of her fellow students enthralled by a special computer study program, which isn't at all suspicious, no sir. Hey, listen, I don't know much about the computer except where you can find celebrity snatch photos, but I'm pretty sure ain't no one staring that intently at fucking number munchers. Come to think of it, wasn't that the plot of a Sailor Moon episode? Offer up your genius mental energy to me! It's not absorbing her energy, but why? Sally Stoolies had enough pussy footing around and starts taking the fight to the school gate, bitch! She stops her loyal foot soldiers and fucking dominates old Raven here with a kid's toy! 
humiliated in front of her back, the defeated whore is pushed out of the alpha position while Snitchy becomes the new capo. The human blackhead goes running to her snatchy sisters, but Squid here has no interest seeing as how she's entered Mousy's picture in a contest and won. But Drew here gifts the skanky sibling with the shotgun, send her in off to whack our pink hair protagonist. But that don't go exactly as planned, you see. Sampai, call an ambulance! Right! Are you alright? Ayumi! She... She must have rigged the gun! She planned it all! My money! Turns out Drew Hair truly is the queen bitch of Pukak Castle. She set up her sister with a bum gun so she could pocket her cash stash. Some bitches just can't be satisfied, I guess. At the exhibition party, Mousy's purloined Peyton is presented as Squid Hairs. Even her pops is there to get a little PR. But suddenly, Saki interrupts like she's from Team Rocket. Turns out Mousy had an extra copy of her piece and a number of others that were taken by the devious debutante. Her old man don't take her out when there's an art thief well, especially when he's pinched for bribery and setting up his various rackets. The chief inspector announces that the Mizuchi House of Cards is falling as fast as a skirt on a J.K. Osampo. But before the two can be made guests of the state, the felonious family is gunned down by a brainwashed Betty, who then does herself in. The rose-haired rat decides Drill Hair's the puppet master and speeds towards her mansion for a final confrontation. Not for nothing, but I've been to worse fucking shindigs. My nephew's first communion celebration was like the Red Wedding. Needless to say, I ain't welcome back to Rigoletto's Bar and Grill no more. It's a shame. The view of Tokyo Tower is fucking breathtaking. When Pinky arrives, her brainwashed classmates gang up on her like it's a fucking Trump rally. Drill hair is just sitting at her piano in the dark, tickling them ivories as Saki takes on her zombie minions like it ain't nothing. When Pinky Finky discovers explosives set for soon, she's attacked by the only black guy in the show. Now, I ain't no race relations expert, but ain't him being, uh, Ubat some kind of bullshit? The fight, though? Can't forget that. First it looks like Drill Hair is gonna make a clean escape in a whirly bird when she spots Duncan McBlouse giving her your grandmother's Malocchio. The baleful blonde leaps out to accept the challenge. It turns out though that she's no wilting flower and it becomes a game of yo-yo versus whip. It gets a little brutal too and may I say not for nothing a little fucking kinky eh? But Pinky distracts Ho of Versailles with Mousy's bells, then finishes the fight with their weapon of choice. Ooh, fine. Bitch must have a great arm. Course then the whole shebang goes kablooey, 
up in flames like the Fed's case against my uncle Enzo, and coincidentally, some of the witnesses. But hey, no tears. Saki walks from the flames with a cuff drill hair, no worse for wear. To live it in! There you have it, ladies and gents. A tale of victory and woe, and a school system that, with all due respect, needs a lot of work. Not for nothing, I could've used some more. Maybe a bit more development for the bald kid or mousy or really anyone. But more importantly, they could've done so much more with the premise. Most OVAs of this length are commercials for the manga, but the manga had been over for decades before this was made, so I ask why? Why was this thing made? Don't get me wrong, it was a fun ride. But it's a trifling thing. Ain't no masterpiece like JoJo's or Fist of the Note Star or Cromarty High School or GoGo13. But hey, it's better than most of the shit that that Gavon Penguin Truth covers. Speaking of which, I better make tracks for that Stunard Marigon Gaijin wakes up from his hard nap and has words with me. I got better things to do, like enjoy a nice brajol with some melon pan. So until we meet next, salute, and take my old man's words to heart. Take care, brush your hair. Teenage sociopaths be like. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this. Big tobacco be like. What was that all about? Did... did I get jumped by Japanese rockabillies?